Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before diesel Just want to have a quick chat about valve clearances and catch cans. Okay, now, just a little bit of background information. Please remember, I'm talking about 1KD FTV diesel engines. Uh, I'll suggest the results, what we find here, would be similar on other engines, but this is what we're talking about. Um, I only really work on these. This is the majority of my work, um, changing injectors, and of course, my recommendation is you check valve clearances when you go in and change your injectors and your injector seats, not the other way around. Um, it's up to you what you want to do, whether you want to follow the Toyota service, bend the fuel pipes, pull the cover off, contaminate your injectors to check your valve clearances every 40,000 Ks. You, you may want to do that, it's up to you. Um, we find that the valve clearances are fine. The outside to that is when there's a vehicle that's got a catch can. Now we've got seen this pattern for a long time now, hundreds of vehicles that, look, the valve, the, we used to do compression tests on every engine, we don't do that anymore, but between all the compression tests and the valve clearance checks, and we still do the valve clearance checks, if there, there's not many vehicles that have catch cans, but the ones that we see that do, there's this pattern of they've got tighter valve clearances. Now this engine's only done 140,000 Ks, and funnily enough, I had another one at 140,000 Ks with a catch can only that had record tight valve clearances, that one was. But that's another story. This video is about this engine, 140,000 Ks, and it's got some of the tightest valve clearance I've seen in a long time. Um, what we believe is happening is the dry abrasive soot's going through wearing the valve seats, and that's what closes up your valve clearances, wear on the valve seats. So wear from the abrasive soot wearing away your valves, valve seats, whatever you want to call it. Oh, I think it's the valve seats. Uh, we don't rebuild engines, so maybe there's someone there that can confirm that, um, but it's either the valves or the valve seats because that's where your valve clearances, the, the wear there is what's going to change them. We see vehicles with three, four, five hundred thousand 500,000 Ks almost um, with valve clearances that are really good. Um, and then we see vehicles with fairly low Ks with catch cans that the valve clearances are quite tight. Now, again, we've had experiences Again, the other one with the catch can where they were so tight, but look, the customer couldn't afford to leave the vehicle. So it's not about what I want and doing things right all the time. It's what people can afford. They couldn't afford to apparently leave the vehicle any longer or spend any more money at the time. We had one valve clearance on an inlet that was 0.05 of a millimetre with a catch can, very tight. Um, never seen it before on one of these engines and haven't seen it since. Um, you know, I recommend against catch cans for the obvious reasons that it costs money, it's untidy, it takes the oil out that we like in the intake, it's not your problem, the soot's your problem. So you really need to understand these systems. I've said it all before, some of you are getting tired of it, but I just wanted to show you, here's another example right here, 140,000 Ks, it had a catch can, customers decided to remove the catch can, um, he's got another solution in mind, I'm not sure he might be going to put a plate in with a 7 mil hole, that's what thousands of people do. Um, I like it, it works, that's all I'm going to say about it. You know, I don't buy, sell or install them, but I do like the way they work. They work really well. From my perspective, I get to see how clean the EGR valves are when doing the injectors, etc., or even clean beforehand or whatever. They may have put the plate in and I get to clean it, whatever the case may be. We get to see a lot of EGR valves in the condition they're in, whether it's got a catch can and a plate or just a catch can or just a plate or nothing. In our opinion, what works really well is the plate with a 7 mil hole. Naturally shutting it off at the ECU would work really well also, but that would definitely be illegal if you're worried about legalities, read the fine print, it's a grey area. Once you shut it off or disable it, it's definitely illegal. Reducing the flow, changing it a little bit, depending on what state you're in the wording, but look, you need a lawyer for that if you're worried about legalities, we're not that. We're just saying it seems to work well, you need to check that out. Um, anyway guys, there's some information for you, hope that helps. Save your money on the catch can. Watch those brackets, they wobble around, they can tear your guard to pieces. People leave taps open, they can drip, they're messy, that's an environmental problem itself. They can, the filter can block and reduce the flow and effectiveness of the crankcase ventilation system. We'll call it PCV, so people know what we're talking about. Whatever, let's not get technical on positive crankcase ventilation or crankcase ventilation or whatever, that's what it is. It's crankcase ventilation with a clear flowing system connected the way it is stock standard it evacuates the oil and the gases and the not the oil it's not there to evacuate the moisture is the main thing and also the gases a little bit and um, with that you get a little bit of oil and it's a very small amount and it actually it's not intended to but it seems to provide a bit of um, upper engine lubrication nothing wrong with that all right guys getting a bit long again five minutes i hope that's helped have a nice day see ya